Hello everyone, this is Rushida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on natural language processing. In this video, we will learn how to do machine learning with text data. So we will take pieces of text and try to see if we can extract or draw the sentiment of the text, if the sentiment is positive or negative. For that, I have this twitter.csv dataset. I downloaded it from Kaggle and I have the link of the dataset in the description box below. Please feel free to download the dataset and practice it with me. So I import pandas as td and then create a data frame using this twitter.csv dataset and then this is the dataset. So we have id, label and tweet and each row contains one tweet. And this tweet data is going to be our focus point today. And here we have label because this is a supervised learning method. So we need the label. In the label column, we have two labels, zero or one. You can see df label.unique, it gives you the unique values of this label column. So we have zero or one. Zero means the negative sentiment and one represents the positive sentiment. As I always do, I'm checking for the null values in the dataset. df.isna.sum, it gives you the number of null values in each column of the data frame. You can see it's all zero. So there are no null values in the dataset. Next step is text preprocessing, which is essential for any natural language processing project because we know that machine learning models cannot process the text. At the same time, in the real world, the raw data that come to us is never ready for machine learning model, never processed and clean enough for the model. So text preprocessing is a requirement pretty much in all the natural language processing project. In my last video, I showed you some popular text preprocessing methods, and I am going to use some of those processing methods here today. The first thing I need to do is to remove the punctuations. You can see we have this at, this pound sign, this colon, and maybe a lot of other stuff in this whole dataset. And we need to remove them to get the clean and clear data, text data only. Maybe some numbers will be there, but we will uh, ignore them for now. So for that, I'm importing string, and then this function called remove punctuation, which takes text what it does let's see i for i in text if i not in string dot punctuation in string dot punctuation we have all the punctuation symbols that is already inbuilt in string dot punctuation we already imported string for that so what it's doing that it's looking for each character and when there is a punctuation it's filtering it out and finally we join it back so that we get these sentences again. Now I apply this remove punctuation function in this df.tweet column. df.tweet.apply lambda x remove punctuation x. I created this tweet clean column that applies this remove punctuation to df.tweet. Now see we have this tweet clean column where we do not have any punctuations. No add pound or any other punctuation symbol here. I'm going to use only one more text preprocessing technique, and for that, I need to really segregate these sentences and make them into the list of words. So, first, I split the sentences and make the list. So, df tokenize it takes text, and it simply split the text based on the space. So, what it does, you can see tweet clean. I applied this tokenized function on tweet clean and I overwrite the tweet clean. This time I am not creating a new column with it. So df tweet clean equals to df tweet clean dot apply lambda x tokenize x. Now we are ready to use our next text preprocessing techniques. What is limitization? And for that, I needed to have the NLTK package. So import NLTK, and then I had to import 
word net lemmatizer. So from nltk.stem import word net lemmatizer. Then you have to download these two things, otherwise it's going to give you an error. Here we initialize wordnet lemmatizer and save it in WNL, this variable. This is lemmatization function that takes text, and this time the text is actually the list of words, which returns WNL.lemmatize, W, W means words, and pause equals to V, that means it limitizes only verbs for WN text. Here I apply this limitization function on the tweet clean again. And again, I just override on the tweet clean. And now see what limitization did to it. What limitization does usually? It brings the word back to its base form. Look, here we had thanks. So after limitization, thanks became thank. Thank is its base form, right? Then talking. Talking became talk. Then you see the camping. Camping became the camp. And remember, we limitized only the verbs. Do you notice that here? Pause equals to V. So wherever there is a verb, and the verb had an ing and ed or any kind of transformation on it, it just became its original form. Finally, I need to just join all the words back so that it looks like sentences again. Here I have the function join words that takes list of words and it returns the joined words that makes it the sentences again. And I apply this on tweet clean again, df tweet clean equals to df tweet clean dot apply lambda x join words and it takes x. So on each row, it applies this join words function. So you see, we joined this back again after all the pre-processing is done. So that's all the data pre-processing I wanted to do for this project. There are lots of other data pre-processing you can do, but you don't need to do all kinds of pre-processing in every project. You can do whatever is appropriate for your project and then test it. So now I'm going to test it. Let's see if we can develop a good machine learning model which has high accuracy or at least reasonable accuracy. First, I need to define x and y, and x is the f to it clean. You know we are going to use this text to train the model for today. And then y, the label. Label is this label column. Then train test split. We import train test split from sklearn.model selection. Then x train x test. Y train y test equals to train test split. It takes x and y that we just defined. And then test size is 0.4, so 40% of the data will be for testing purpose. And then random state 21, and you can use any other integer of your choice. So as you know that our x train and x test both are this text data, and we need to extract the features, numeric features from the text data. We will use two different methods to extract the features from the text today and then develop the model and check the model's performance. The first method is count vectorizer. If you do not know how count vectorizer works, I have a complete different video on how to use count vectorizer and how it works behind the scene. So please feel free to check that video. I have the link in the description box below. For this video, I am only going to use the code purpose and how to use it in the model. So from sklearn.featureselection.txt import count vectorizer and then here I'm calling count vectorizer and passing stop words equals to English. What it does, it simply filter out all the stop words. Stop word means the word that may not be that meaningful for the model like is, in, am, be, with, those kind of words. If you use stop words equals to English, it just takes out all those little words that may not be too meaningful for the machine learning model. Now I fit transform the x train into this count vectorizer cv and then our x test needs to be transformed as well cv.transform x test. So now we are ready for machine learning model. 
Today I used logistic regression for this classification problem. So from SKLR.linear model, import logistic regression first. Then I call logistic regression here and pass random state 23. You can use any other integer of your choice. Then we need to feed the training data. The training feature that we extracted here using count vectorizer, the train vec, and y train. Now let's check the model accuracy score lr.score test vec the feature that extracted from the text data and then y test it gives us 95 percent accuracy which is pretty good and then the accuracy on training data is 98 percent you see a little bit of overfitting here which is very normal in any natural language processing project because no matter how much data you train on Still, in test set, you may find some new data or new words. So, a little bit overfitting is acceptable in natural language processing project. Then here, I am doing the confusion matrix from sklr.matrix, import confusion matrix. I created this confusion matrix using our test data. So, first, I had to predict the labels for test data. And then confusion matrix, you pass the original label and the predicted label which gives you the confusion matrix. I have a detailed video on confusion matrix as well. If you need to check it, please check it out. Here you see we have pretty good true positive and true negatives. And there are some false positives and false negatives as well, which is quite expected because you see we do not have 100% accuracy. 95 and 98% accuracy on this kind of a project is quite acceptable for me. Let's move on to the second method. Here I used TF-IDF vectorizer to extract the feature from the text data again. If you want to know the detail how actually TF-IDF vectorizer works, please feel free to check the video on that. I have the link in the description box below. Today we are going to focus on the code part of it. From sklearn.featureextraction.text import TF-IDF vectorizer. And here I'm calling TF IDF vectorizer and I'm passing stop words equals to English. Here I used one more parameter to it, max DF equals to 0 0.8, which means if any word is present, more than 80% of the text, we exclude that. Let's see what happens. Train TF IDF equals to TF IDF dot fit transform and we pass X train and then we transform X test as well. Let's try logistic regression again. So logistic regression, random state, here I put one, you use any other integer of your choice, dot fit. This time I used a train TFIDF as the training data and then Y train. So the model training is done again. Let's find out the accuracy score for training and test data. For training data, we have 95% accuracy and for test data, we get 94% accuracy this time. The accuracy on training and test data is very close this time, so almost no overfitting. And then we create the confusion matrix again. So for that, we use the ypred and use the test data in our one dot predict test tfidf and then confusion matrix y test the original label and this ypred the predicted label. This is the confusion matrix compared to a true positive and true negative. Our false positive and false negative are actually quite low. So we created a successful model to analyze the sediment or extract the sediment of tweets. Please feel free to try these techniques on other text data and see how and experiment with it. If you like this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.